Hey, this is Jeff, and welcome back to Fallout 3 Pacifism and More. Last week we completed Blood Ties Without Violence, which I didn't realize had created a serious problem. The Peaceful Solution rewards you with 300 karma, so we're now well into good territory. The closest map marker we have to Paradise Falls is Northwest Seneca, and if we fast travel there we'll be instantly ambushed by Talon Mercs. The good news is, Luce is already thinking a slaver headquarters is probably heavily guarded and there's no way she'll be able to break three kids out, so her best bet is probably just to buy them and set them free. We'll need money for that, and there was that huge stash of really valuable ammo in Evan King's house. Now that Arafu's under the protection of the family, he won't need it, right? But yeah, now that the quest is completed, the other residents actually come out of their houses during the day. Hey ho! Welcome back to our cozy village. But I doubt they have much worth stealing. It's also worth pointing out that this house at the bottom of the ramp is usually boarded up. The only way to get in is by finishing blood ties and convincing Vance to protect Arafu, in which case Alan moves in. The most noteworthy thing in here is a skill book, unarmed I believe, which isn't helpful to lose, but is valuable. Yeah, pugilism illustrated. Which isn't to say it's the only thing Luz is going to steal. I mean, Alan just moved in. He'd probably appreciate an opportunity to redecorate in his own nocturnal idiom. Wow, still good. Well, we need to unload this loot anyway, so let's head back to Megaton and stop by Moriarty's. He's a jerk, so we can rob him guilt-free. Hi, Colin. <laughs> Be that way. I already got what I wanted. Specifically, neutral karma. Now we'll sell this stuff to Moira and have her patch up any armor that needs it. Okay, I slept an hour to get hit points back, so we need to kill some time while the well-rested bonus wears off. And since we're back to neutral karma, a good way to do that is to go see the next new feature in the mod, which was inspired by a comment on the Nexus. Pro tip if you want to avoid Talon Mercs or Regulators, which we definitely do in this run, always make sure your karma is neutral before going to Rivet City. They spawn at Anacostia Station, on the other side of the road from the caravan stop, but the Rivet City fast travel marker is close enough that it'll trigger them. They won't see you, but they'll hang out over there forever. If you ever had negative karma and came here specifically to donate money to Father Clifford, then walked over to Anacostia Station and regulators jumped you anyway even though your karma was back to neutral, that's why. Which is the meta reason Luz donated money to the Church of Adam instead of Father Clifford after getting a big pile of negative karma in Tranquility Lane. Yes, that's locked. And yes, I can see you eyeing it. Geez, shrapnel. It's not like I'm a world-famous burglar or anything. Decided to check out the shop, eh? If you want any of this shit, just holler. Don't really want guns, but can I see what you have for sale? Need to do some killing, eh? No, quite the opposite. Anyway, here at Flack and Shrapnels, we'll see that they have a new item in their inventory. The Taser Fist. Works like a power fist, but does negligible damage. But stuns enemies. Sounds like just the thing for getting out of a serious jam. I put it here because it makes sense lore-wise, and balance-wise you can get it fairly early in the game, but not immediately. Anyway, definitely having that. Thanks. You're welcome. Gotta run. If you need more ammo, this is where to get it. More of a seller than a buyer, but I'm sure I'll be back. Now we'll fast travel to Northwest Seneca and head for Paradise Falls. Fingers crossed, no Talon Mercs. Arafu's a lot farther from Northwest Seneca than Rivet City is from Anacostia, so they shouldn't have spawned when we picked up good karma last week. Looks like they did not. Good. Quick stop in the metro first to sell sugar bombs to Murphy, and then rescue the kids. Full disclosure, I haven't tested the Taser Fist with a non-pacifist character to see if it's overpowered. Weapons with knockdown effects, like the Gauss Rifle, are great for dealing with enemies that dish out a lot of damage. I don't think this would be game-breaking because it'd take time to switch back to something that can actually hurt them, but if you think it gives you an unfair advantage and you don't like it, don't buy it. Which reminds me of another new feature inspired by comments on the Nexus. I made some of the mod features optional, specifically the Tranquility Lane Kill Count Adjustment and the Non-Lethal Mole Rat Repellent. And I think there's one behind us right now, but we can just outrun it. 
If you're only interested in the mod for the bug fixes, you can just ignore the other features. Don't refuse to kill things when you talk to Dad, don't buy the taser fist, and so on. I'll show you how to configure Tranquility Lane in the mole rat repellent at the end of the video. And here we are at Paradise Falls. Hold it right there. Nobody's allowed into Paradise Falls except on slaver business. And I get to decide what qualifies as slaver business. Okay. So can I head on up? You? I don't think so. You're not really... Let's just say that you wouldn't fit in up there. So why don't you just turn around and head back the way you came? Why can't I go up there? There's two kinds of people who get into Paradise Falls. Slaves and slavers. So unless you're looking to become a slave, piss off. Oh, cool. Automatic success. Everyone has a price. What's yours? We might be able to work something out, but it won't be cheap. If I vouch for you and you go mess up our groove, it's my ass on the line. I think 500 caps should cover it. What do you say? Here's your 500 caps. I can go in now, right? Thank you. Pleasure doing business with you. Enjoy your visit to Paradise Falls. Friendly warning. Don't act like a jackass. You won't get a second chance. I didn't remember the speech check being that easy. I was afraid we were going to have to go enslave somebody for him. In which case I was going to nab Arkansas. We already have a map marker in Minefield and he's a homicidal maniac, so it wouldn't be. Where are you going? Maybe that mole rat that was chasing us aggroed him. Well, good luck with that. In a second, we get a little scripted event. People trying to escape. Yeah, here he comes. That's why people don't escape. And here's one of the kids we're looking for. I think this one is Sammy. Yeah, Sammy. Oh, God, lady, you gotta help us. You gotta get us out of here. That's the plan. Sit tight and don't get any closer to the gate with that bomb collar on. Now, there are several ways to rescue the kids. Brute force? Just killing all the slavers is a non-starter for Luz. There's a more subtle way to sneak them out, but if you get caught, the slavers will aggro. But the most obvious way, and the way Luz is going to do it, is just buy them and set them free. Oh. This is easy to miss. You always see pool cues around pool tables, but this one is a unique weapon, the break. Useless to lose, but worth pretty decent money. And for some reason, it's not even marked as stealing. And speaking of stealing... No ticks on the compass. I think we lucked out and got here when Eulogy and his bodyguards were out doing the rounds. That'll make this a bit easier. There's a big stash of quantum back here behind the stairs. It'll be easier to pick up with the light off. In fact, regular Nuka has fairly good value to weight ratio. Might as well take it all. Actually, stealing from evil characters doesn't give you negative karma, so as long as we're alone in here, there's no reason not to rob him blind. Here's the speech bobblehead, which like all bobbleheads isn't even marked as stealing. The inscription on the base reads, Let your words be your weapon. Which is especially appropriate for Luz. Speech skill permanently increased by 10. Nice. Oh, they're home. If you must be our prospective customer, I do hope Paradise Falls can accommodate your needs. We make no judgments, no assumptions. We understand that it's a harsh world out there, and you do what you must to make it. Now, was there something specific you were interested in? You've got some kids out there. I want them. You do? Hell, that's great news. They'll work out well for you, I think. Full of energy, great for small jobs now, and bigger loads down the road. I'm sure we can come to a reasonable agreement, something you'll find affordable. Great. Let's talk price. For starters, I'm thinking 500 caps each for the little ones, Sammy and Penny. I think their names are. Now the other one, Squirrel, that's a 
talented kid. 500 would be a crime. I'm thinking a thousand caps for him, bringing us to a total of 2,000 caps. Cool. That speech bobblehead is paying off already. 2,000 is a bit steep. 1,200 for all three is a more reasonable offer. I suppose I can accept that. It's a deal. The kids are yours. I'll have them delivered to the front gate for you. What the hell, lady? We're not going anywhere with you. You don't own us. MacReady sent me. I'm here to rescue you. God, why didn't you say that? Come on, let's go before they change their minds. I don't like the way that Mungo looks at me. Um, you gonna go? I guess they follow us. Well, I guess that's it. Thanks for getting us out of there, Mungo. We're coming back home now. You ever come out that way, you stop and say hi. I'll tell Mayor not to shoot you, okay? Interesting cluster at the door there. And we level up. We could get lockpick to 70, which would let us open hard locks with a utility suit, or science to 70 and hack hard terminals with the lab coat. Or... I'm going to put three points in each, so we can do medium locks or terminals without carrying extra outfits. And when we need a burst of speed, we'll be even faster naked. And put the rest in speech. I know we just had a 100% chance with Grouse and Eulogy, but those weren't hard checks. For the perk, impartial mediation just unlocked, and if I was sure we could keep our karma neutral, that'd be very tempting. Yeah, I'm doing it, which means we didn't need to put all those points in speech. Go back. That can go down to 70. Put one point in repair just to make it a round number. Wouldn't hurt to get a few more hit points out of stim packs. Five points in medicine. And two in barter. Perfect. Now take impartial mediation. Done. You guys not going to follow Sammy? No? Well, see you at Lamplight. And why am I running to the exit? You can't fast travel from the courtyard, but as soon as you're out here, you can. Back to Megaton to sell some loot and stash the gear I don't need anymore. Yeah, you need something? Nope, just on my way home. Ah, damn it. The well-rested bonus wasn't worn off. We might not have leveled up if I'd paid attention and waited a few hours. <sighs> well, it's not that big a deal. Brutes would have been spawning in Vault 87 anyway. Moira hadn't restocked, so she didn't have much money, but I can sell the rest of this stuff at Lamplight after MacReady lets us in. We have mild radiation poisoning, so let's get a rad scrub before we head there. Excuse me, Nathan. You again? I told you to get lost! Yeah, but I got your friends back. Can I come in now? I guess you're okay after all, Mungo. You can come in, but you better not piss me off. And when the gate opens, we'll ask him for directions. I still need to get into Vault 87, and you said you know the way? It's not safe, even for someone as brave as you. There's monsters back there. Yeah, you told me that already. So you know the way to get there? Yeah, I do. It's through Murder Pass. Not a real safe way to go, but it's the only door that works. Yeah, Murder Pass doesn't sound like something that's going to work for me. Are you sure that's the only way? The only way that works, yeah. The other door hasn't worked since before I was here. Computer's busted and not even Joseph can make it work. Maybe I can. Where can I find Joseph? I'm the mayor, not a babysitter, Mungo. Beats me. Oh, I think this is him. Well, now, here's something new. What's a grown-up like you doing in Little Lamplight? Don't tell me when McCready's going soft on us. Actually, he let me in for rescuing those kids. That was you? Well, my most sincere thanks, then. You brought my sister Penny back to me, and I couldn't ask more than that. I'm Joseph, and if there's ever anything I can do for you, just name it. Okay, there you go. The computer is on again. Don't know what good it'll do you. Well, I can probably hack the terminal now that it's back on. 
I have to go now. Okay. Bye-bye. So now... Oh, wait. I had so much trouble finding Joseph that I almost forgot to sell loot. Whoa, are we letting Mungo's in now? Didn't hear any shots, so I'm guessing you're not here to raid us. And if you're not here to raid us, you might just have brought something cool for us, see? So who are you, and how'd you get let in? I'm from Vault 101, and I rescued some of your friends from the slavers. Oh, that was you? Nice work. I hope one of you grabbed some of their gear before you left. Gotta make them pay for something like that. Speaking of which, I'm Nick Knack, and I take care of the general store around here. Then today's your lucky day, because I did indeed steal a ton of stuff from the slavers, and I am here to sell it to you. And see if you have any stim packs for sale. I hope you brought me some cool stuff. There we go. Unlock door. Sneak. Lights off. And here we are in Vault 87. This is gonna be fun. And we level up again. Um, I wasn't expecting this one, so bear with me. Well, once again, we can get lockpick up to 70, which would let us open hard locks with the utility suit. And now that I think about it, there is at least one hard lock in Vault 87 that has some really good loot behind it. There's also a very hard lock that lets you bypass a really nasty ambush, but we'd have to level up again and find a couple skill books to do that. But yeah, 20 points in lockpick and put the rest in speech. But for the perk, I have no idea what I'm going to take here. Rad resistance isn't bad, but hopefully in the near future we'll be able to buy the infirmary upgrade for the house that I meant to buy back when I bought the chem lab by mistake. At that point, we can get a free rad scrub whenever we want, and rads become much less of a problem. Yeah, I'm going to take another rank of intense training and put it in agility, which will make us a little bit sneakier. But I left the utility suit in Megaton because I didn't think we'd need it. You want to go to Big Town? Of course you do! Yeah, <laughs> sticky. What's with the party hat? Oh, I forgot I had that on. It was for my birthday. Here, you take it. I don't want it anymore. Understandable, given the circumstances. So where's Big Town located? It's east of Little Lamplight. Come on, let's go there. It's not that far away. We'll be there in no time. I'm not going to take him right now, and not just because he's notoriously annoying. On very hard difficulty, his chances of surviving the trip if you don't fast travel directly to Big Town are pretty slim. I ignored the birthday party on the way in, but if you haven't played the game, all lamplighters get kicked out of town on their 16th birthday because, as McCready made quite clear, they don't trust adults. Mungos, in their terminology. And Big Town is where they go when they leave. But I think I saw that he gave us a map marker, so we can find it later and unlock fast travel and then take him. Which has the side benefit of not having to listen to his incessant babbling the whole way. So, sorry Sticky. I have to go now, but I'll be back. Why won't you just take me to Big Town? I will, alright. Just not right now. Okay, I was thinking about it, and once we get through the first level of Vault 87, we're pretty much committed. I mean, the enemies don't respawn, so ordinarily you could clear a room or two and leave to rest and restock at any time. But since we won't be killing anything, at some point going back would be more dangerous than going forward. And I've already been playing several hours, so starting that probably doesn't make sense. But we need to unlock the fast travel marker for Big Town, and I haven't had a chance to show off the taser fist yet, so let's fast travel to Moresti and see if we run into something along the way. Preferably not something too dangerous. Unbelievable. If I didn't want to run into anything, I'd have been attacked half a dozen times by now. There's the front gate to Big Town. We don't actually want to go in, because then we'd hear all of their problems. But there's one spot outside the fence where you can tag the fast travel marker. I think it's right here. Yes. 
Well, there are raiders and super mutants to the north, but they're in groups. Which, getting out of a jam when you're surrounded is kind of what this thing is for, but it's not a situation I want to purposely get into. Let's see if we can find something solitary south of town. Violence Don't. will not be tolerated. There we go. Now, run away! Seriously? I didn't mean to lure it this close to the town. Fugitive has been located. Commencing attack. Missed. Now go back down south where you belong. What am I saying? It's not going anywhere as long as I'm here. There it goes. Oh, don't come back over here. Nothing to see. I'm just a bush. Attention. Fugitive should be considered armed and dangerous. It's coming over. And it's gonna see us. Alright, we'll just lure it south ourselves. Serpentine! I can't believe that worked. And it just disappeared from the compass. Are we far enough away to fast travel? Yes. Can't believe that either. Well, now you've seen the taser fist in action. So I'm going to heal, actually wait until the well-rested bonus wears off this time, save, and show you how it works in the GEC. Madam, may I suggest you seek medical attention as soon as possible? Wadsworth, are you mocking me for buying the wrong upgrade? Fair enough, I guess. Before I get started on the technical stuff, when I was editing the game footage, I realized I made a boneheaded mistake the second time I leveled up. I got lockpick where I wanted it, and just out of habit, I put the remainder in speech, which of course is wasted because I already had speech 70 and the impartial mediation perk. It was only three points, but the next time some other skill is three points shy of being able to do something important, it's because I'm an idiot. So, the Taser Fist started with a copy of the Power Fist object and tweaked a few game data parameters. First, I set the damage, critical damage, and crit multiplier all to zero so it doesn't hurt the target when it hits. It still might do a couple points of damage depending on your unarmed skill because of how the game's combat damage formula works, but creatures with super low hit points like a rad roach, you can kill them just by stomping on them. So if you have a high unarmed skill and swat one with a metal gauntlet, even one that's non-lethal on paper, don't be surprised if they die. It has slightly less item health to reflect higher wear and tear from the electrical arc, same as the Shocker, which, if you've never seen it, is a unique variant of the Power Fist that does bonus EMP damage to robots and power armor. Increased the value a bit compared to a vanilla Power Fist because I didn't want it to be too easy to get, and it is a unique variant and their values are always a bit higher, and gave it an object effect. The object effect has a single base effect, the base effect is a script type, like the Molrat Repellent and Modded Slasher Knife, and has the display name only flag enabled. If this isn't checked, Barter Menus and the Pip-Boy Inventory screen will only show calculated damage for an effect, and since this effect doesn't do any damage, the effect wouldn't show up in those menus. And here's the effect script. The first hint that things are going to get a bit complicated is that we use Get Self to get a ref ID for the target. I've mentioned before that the default context for effect scripts is the target, so most functions you'd want to call don't require an explicit reference. Like in this if condition, it just calls get is creature type without having a reference ID dot prefix in front of it, because it'll be called on the effect target by default, and that's what we want. But back to that line in a minute. In the else, which is what happens when you punch the vast majority of things, it plays a zap noise, which is a custom sound effect. All the electrical zap noises in the game audio either weren't loud enough to hear during combat, or they had a long reverb tail that made them sound weird on a weapon like you were fighting inside an oil drum. So I loaded the ones I liked best in Audacity, boosted the gain, chopped off the reverb tails to make them all about a half second long, and tapered them down to zero. I created a new sound object in the GEC, and assigned it the folder where I put the WAV files I exported from Audacity. If you assign a specific WAV file, that's what the game will always play when that sound object is used, but if you assign a folder, it'll pick one of the WAV files in that folder at random. 
That's used for weapons, footsteps, anything that would sound really fake if it was the same sample played over and over in sequence. Back to the script, after it plays the sound effect, it puts a temporary visual effect of sparks around the target, and then it knocks them down. Push actor away might be my favorite function in the whole API. Not the most broadly useful, but if you played Koito Ergo Sum, it's what I used for the bell on the obstacle course in Parump, and that still cracks me up every time I do it. I'm not sure what makes me a bigger nerd. That, or the fact that I have a favorite function in an API. Anyway. Push actor away requires two references, the one doing the pushing away, which is called on, in this case the player, and the one being pushed, which is given as a parameter, in this case the effect target, which is why we needed to call get self at the beginning. The last parameter is the push force. One works fine for the taser fist, but set it high enough and you can get some truly hilarious fus roda effects. So back to that if line. I decided that it would be kind of silly for the taser fist to work on really gigantic creatures like behemoths and giant ant queens, but believe it or not, there's no simple way to determine what a creature is from its reference. Get is creature type takes a parameter that corresponds to a category of creature, ghoul, robot, giant insect, super mutant, and so on, and returns one or zero, yes or no. But between that and the creature's base health, we can figure it out. A super mutant, creature type 4, with base health of 2000, has to be a behemoth, because there are no other super mutant variants with that many hit points. Overlords are like 1250. Likewise, a mutated insect, creature type 2, with a base health of 1000, has to be a giant ant queen. If the target is either one of those creatures, it just plays the zap sound, but it doesn't knock them down. Now, you might be thinking, you said this was going to be complicated, but it's actually not that bad. Oh, we're just getting warmed up. Back in the weapon object, on the art and sound tab, I wanted to change the attack sound, because a regular power fist does its damage with pneumatic pistons, but the taser fist doesn't do damage, it just zaps them, so I wanted to get rid of the chunky cycling sound the vanilla power fist makes. But no matter what I picked in any of the attack sound field, even no sound at all, it still made the power fist noise. Long story short, it took a couple days, but I figured out it's embedded in the attack animation file. Not the sound itself, that's in a WAV file like you'd expect, but the command to play it. I've seen other animations that do that if there's an animated object involved, so the game can play a sound effect at the right part of the animation. Like how drinking animations play a gulping sound when the bottle reaches the character's lips. Guns and most other weapons don't do that, and do use the attack sounds on the weapon object screen, because they start making sound as soon as you click the fire button. But the power fist is special because it doesn't make noise until your arm is extended and the pistons pop out. If it was a normal animation, it'd be simple enough to copy the animation file and edit it so it doesn't trigger a sound effect, and then have the mod use the new version. But weapon animations are special. As far as I can tell, they're not specified in the GEC, so they might be hard-coded in the game executable. The only control I could find over them is in two fields. Animation type, which can be hand-to-hand, one-handed melee like swords, two-handed melee like clubs, one-handed guns, and so on. Each of those types has default animations that any weapon of that type will use unless you override it with the attack animation field. If you set this to default, the weapon will use the default attack animation for its type, in this case hand-to-hand -hand melee, which is used for bare fists, brass knuckles, and that kind of thing. Those attacks use both hands, which is why the power fist has an override, so you only attack with the hand it's on, and it's attack 5. But fortunately for the taser fist, there's another override for one-handed, hand-to-hand melee weapons, attack 3, which is for the deathclaw gauntlet. It's a stabbing motion that works really well for the taser fist, and it doesn't have an embedded sound trigger. So now the attack sound fields work as you'd expect, and it just makes an air swishing sound when you swing. And like we saw earlier, if you hit, the effect script plays the zap noise. I almost forgot, I said I'd show you how to configure the mod features that are more, I don't know, intrusive. Like I said, most of them you can just ignore in-game, don't tell dad you're a pacifist, don't buy the taser fist, whatever but there was no way to opt out of the non-lethal mole rat repellent or the tranquility lane kill count adjustment. Until now. I talked a little bit about global variables and why you shouldn't use them last week, but here's another reason why you might want to. If you made these configuration flags quest variables, then you wouldn't be able to give exact instructions to players on how to set them. 
You could only give them the quest ID and the variable name. They'd have to get the load order of the mod from their mod manager and string it all together into a console command. By using globals, all you have to do is bring up the console and type set pam config repellent is lethal to 1 to make the Molrat repellent lethal again. Set pam config tl failsafe kills count to 0. So if you use the failsafe in Tranquility Lane, your kill count doesn't go up, just like the vanilla game. Even though the residents die in real life, so I still think that's wrong. And set pamconfig tl slasher kills count to 1. So if you kill their avatars when Betty gives you that task, your kill count does go up. Again, like the vanilla game. Which doesn't kill the residents in real life, and I also think is wrong. But if you disagree with my assessment of the ethics of the situation, or you just want the mod for the bug fixes and don't care about the no-kill features, there you go. As always, thanks for watching. Like, tell me in the comments if you have suggestions for other ways to facilitate a no-kill run. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.